this video is about the multiverse, the universe, and how of you. So stick around and maybe you'll learn something. I want to talk with you all about the universe for a minute and this concept because what I'm about to tell you is something to inspire you to research more. I know a lot of people have been feeling kind of down. They don't know, you know, where to go next in their learning, what path that they want to take to get there. So I'm going to be doing these, you know, some of these videos to be able to just get you thinking a little bit and maybe teach you something in, you know, the meantime. So the universe, wow. Everybody thinks that it just stops with them, you know? They see the world around them and that's what they see. You know, they know there's their space, they know there's other dimensions, but really they're only still focused on what's surface. You know, the furniture, the television, the technology, the way that they look, their friends, their family, their car, all of that. And what they don't realize is that there's something much deeper going on there. Okay, now I'm going to use like a little bit of an example here to help you better understand where I'm going with this. Okay, so when you look at yourself, you are a third dimensional being and you know, you're the size that you are and most of us in the world are pretty average in the same size. You know, there's some people that are a little taller, there's some that are a little shorter, but you know, we're basically around the same, you know, scale. So, you know, when you get down into the microscopic world, you know, let's say there was a little tiny dust mite inside of my hand. It's microscopic. You put it under the microscope, you can see it, and if you notice, it's clear, it's see-through, it looks like an apparition of a bug, right? So when you have that dust mate on you, is it seeing you for the way that you see you or is there a whole other perception going on? If you said there's a whole other perception going on, you're absolutely right. See, the dust mate being, you know, on your skin isn't seeing your skin for the way that you see it. To that dust mate, your skin is like a rocky terrain you know, the, the flakes of your dry skin that you don't see, the crevices in your skin, it's like a desert. It'd be like the Grand Canyon to us. You know, they don't see your face the way that you see it. It's just like a big sphere of something and they see the eyes are kind of like, you know, probably look how the sun appears to us, to that little tiny mite, it's enormous. So they're not saying, oh, it's a person. They don't even acknowledge us as a person. They don't even acknowledge us as an entity. We're just a surface to them. And that's kind of how it is for us. We are here and this is how we see things because this is our realm. But if you go beyond that, you know, how would we view things? See, everything that we live in is vapor. And it's funny because everybody says, oh, it's oxygen and, you know, there's space and then there's time. No, everything is vapor. You know, if you go back into the spiritual texts, it said that the creator separated the waters from the waters, then made the firmament, and then made the land and the seas. So what were the waters that he was separating before he made the sky, the seas, and the land? It was, you know, the universe, the multiverse. That's what the creator was separating. See, the Creator is larger than anybody can ever, ever understand. And, you know, to the Creator, the multiverse is just little drops of water. Many universes and organisms and all of that in those little drops, and they're kind of just bunched up together. But when you go into that drop and you shrink down and shrink down, smaller and smaller and smaller, you start to see you know, the celestial bodies, and it's no longer like a drop of water. It's more of like a vapor, breathable vapor. Just for an example, if you were to put that dust mite in the ocean, do you think that it would be liquid to the dust mite? No, it wouldn't even view it as an ocean because that ocean would be too large for that dust mite to comprehend that it was liquid. It would be more of a vapor, more of an, you know, an atmosphere rather than a liquid. And that's what's going on for, you know, humans. The air that we breathe 
is a vapor because we are too small in the universe in size to notice that we're actually in a drop of water. And, you know, because it's like a vapor to smaller forms of things, you know, you have the stars and, you know, the other celestial bodies that are, you know, burning from gases and things like that, you know, because they can function in vapor that way. But if you shrunk everything and you go back up to where the creator is, it's still just that little drop of water. So where I'm going with this is, is that if we're within our whole entire universe is within one of those drops of water that's connected to the other drops that make up the multiverse then even the smallest thing in this entire existence can be filled with life so think about it you are sitting there and you're watching this video and you're looking at me and what you see is a person but if you were to go in within me you would see that there are cells and science has only been able to get down to a certain level in size with cells but if they were to go beyond that you know beyond the atom what would exist there would that be like a whole other universe it is we are a universe within us and that's why we were told that we are the temple of the Creator because the Creator has given us consciousness and we share that consciousness with one another. We share it with everything in existence and with the beings that live within us. There are little beings that live within the cells, within the atoms, you know, um, having a world of their own, but they are so small in size that they don't realize that they're a cell and we're too big to realize that they're even there. Just like the Creator is too big for us to ever understand and we're way too small for the Creator to see. So a lot of people say, well, if the Creator is so big and doesn't see us, how can He answer our prayers? Well, that goes back to being enlightened, being connected to consciousness and the Akasha and all of that. The Creator is so in tune with the light that it's used to make everything that it feels us and our needs and our wants and our thoughts rather than hearing it. And we can do the same thing for the beings within our own universe. You know, if you sit there and you just close your eyes and you meditate and you really stare out and you start getting lost into that stare, you'll start to see like little lights pop up. You'll start to see faces appear in those lights. Those are the prayers of the souls that are within those tiny little atoms that make up more universes within you. And that's exactly how it works. The Creator gets our prayers through seeing a thought form of us you know, coming towards him to be able to communicate. And although he can't hear us, getting that thought form will, you know, due to the connection, will inform him of someone that's trying to connect, trying to establish that channel, that connection. So the word universe, okay, let's break down the word a little bit if you think I'm going a little too far with this. You, it starts out with you and in, within, and verse. The word, a verse, it's a word, a vibration. And that's what the Creator used. The creator used itself within the vibration, the universe. And we have the same thing. The universe is called universe because it's all about all of you and me and them. We make it up because we also have a verse within us, a vibration within us that has to take care of other beings that might be way too small for us to realize that they're there, but they are. It's all about being alert and about being aware and about being conscious. Because if you're not, you're always going to go through your life seeing just what's all around you rather than how deep all of this really really goes you know it doesn't stop with just what you see it goes beyond just like we're microscopic to the creator you know we might be the creator to even more microscopic beings within us and we hold the keys to all of that and if you can master your own universe you can master pretty much anything after that and that's the point of this video 
be aware. You know, you say that you're awakening, you're ascending, but you're leaving out the most important part is that you are a creator because all of your thoughts and feelings exist within you, within that molecular level, in those little worlds. You've created little worlds within, you know, those spaces, but they're just too small for you to ever realize that they're there until you establish the channel, the, the communication, just like our creator had to do with us. You know, go inward. That's why they say that. It's not just because you have to go within your thoughts and within, you know, your mind to understand you. You're going inward to understand the universe, the creator that you are. You know, um, some of those visions that you might have might not be yours or from, you know, another spiritual realm. It might be from the realm within you. So you have to really dig deep. You have to see this on all scales from the largest to the smallest to even the almost non-existent scale of consciousness. It exists everywhere with in everything and consciousness thinks it feels so therefore it's a soul it's an energy it's a light so it all counts no matter how big or how small and you are responsible for your universe so go inward and dig deep and establish that channel with all of the beings that are within you and become the creator that you're meant to be today I know a lot of this sounds very science fiction but you have to really, really see this as it really is. You know, even the strangest things are reality. And if you don't expand, you're not going to grow. You know, go with it. Use your imagination. What do you see? How do things feel to you? You know, even if it seems strange, you know, research it. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Go for it. You can always learn more. And I'm here to inspire you to do so. But don't leave out your own thoughts. You know, you don't need a guide all the time. You can actually use what's coming to you and make some really big discoveries out there. So take care of your universe. Research it. Look up the multiverse theory. Um, see how there are bubbles of, of water that seem like breathable vapor to us because of our smaller size. And our body might seem like vapor to these molecular little universes within us. There is no beginning. There is no end. That's the alpha and the omega. And you are a part of that. So thanks for watching. I hope this video made sense. You know, I try to use my own personality without, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, scientific detail because I want you all to understand, be inspired and create and master your universe. So, namaste and lots of love.